Well, it's been a red day for Australian shares, but what triggered the selling and is there more to come? Hi there everyone, welcome to the Trader Circle Weekly Market Update. Today is Tuesday the 22nd of October 2024 and before I get started, you do need to be aware that whatever I say is general advice only and you have to consider whether it's appropriate for you. There's a big drop down today in our market. We were down about 1.66% on the close. We fell uh, close to 150 points. Um, it was a fairly substantial sell-off. Every major sector of our market saw strong selling. The miners, the banks, uh, energy, just about everything dropped quite substantially. And it is a little bit surprising because we didn't see US markets move much lower overnight. There was only very moderate selling for the US markets. Uh, and indeed their S&P 500 dropped by about 0.2 of a percent. Uh, usually we sort of follow what they do in the US. So our substantial selling today does look a little bit out of place. Now, what could have triggered it? What caused Australian investors to be happy to buy at all time highs a few days ago? And now they're starting to uh, you know, hit the sell button as quickly as they physically can. Well, there's a few things I sort of want to look at. One, prices are extremely expensive. Our market is the most expensive it's ever been. Uh, we have you know, negative earnings growth this year. It's unlikely we'll see much earnings growth next year. And you know, with our fundamental valuations as they are, even if overseas markets stall, there is a, a drive, probably a uh, desire for you know, fundamental investors to look to take profits for our market. Uh, these are the most expensive our prices have ever been from most mathematical calculations. But I don't think that's enough to justify the, the selling that we saw today. It could simply be that, you know, after hitting an all-time high, shorters took the opportunity to instate, you know, short positions. Uh, investors took the opportunity to sort of say, well, that's my level to get out. I think another factor to look at is the big jump in bond yields that we've seen over the last 48 hours. And I will touch on that in a moment. But I do think, uh, you know, for for you know, people who've been looking for a potential turning point or a potential signal in the market uh, to, to hit the sell button, perhaps uh, some of the uh, spikes in yields that we've seen over the last 48 hours could have been one of those sort of inflection points. Before I talk about that though, I do wanna to touch on US earnings. It's a pretty quiet week uh, this week, it was quiet last week, uh, and uh, it's gonna be a quiet week pretty much next week for economic data and events. And instead, the, the most sort of important thing driving global markets have been US earnings results. So far, the US earnings season has actually been really good. Uh, and that's allowed fresh all-time highs to be reached in the US market, probably helped contribute to our own all-time high last week. Uh, and I suspect that, you know, if those earnings continue to come in strong this week, we'll see markets at least hold around their all-time highs. Markets were stalling out a bit after the, uh, the September rate cut from the Fed, and it was in fact the strong earnings reporting that allowed a small additional leg higher. Uh, and so far, yeah, as I mentioned, the majority of companies have reported better than expected results. If that continues this week, it could continue to provide a bit of a bullish fire under the market. Now, it will be quite a big week for earnings. About 20% of the S&P 500, about 100 companies, will report earnings this week. Uh, and it's going to be just about every major sector. So uh, that will be probably the most important thing for global markets this week. I did want to touch on the yield, the yields rising though. We saw a spike in US yields overnight uh, and we saw a massive spike in Australian government bond yields today. Uh, we actually had a podcast yesterday and we talked about uh, you know, what's driving the global uh, rally in just about everything in risk asset markets. And we looked at uh, you know, US government spending. The US government is running a $2 trillion deficit this year. Uh, you know, they're receiving um, taxation receipts of about $5 trillion. You know, so for every uh, uh, dollar they receive, they're essentially spending $1.50 you know, uh, pretty much in, um, in government spending. That's pumping extreme amounts of money into the market. It's creating extreme amounts of new money. And that's allowed the US economy to avoid a recession where otherwise you would have assumed that you know, given the rising interest rates, the US economy would have slowed, slowed down dramatically. So that extreme amount of, I would say, money printing has flown into markets, has pushed prices higher, but the inevitable consequence of it is that investors might start to demand 
higher yields for lending money to the US government. And I think that, you know, as a result, we might not see as many rate cuts happen as quickly as markets initially expected. And I think that's perhaps what we saw in the US bond market overnight. And that's what caused those yields to rise. For our own market, it was, uh, it was pretty substantial, the, yields, the yield rise that we saw today. Um, you know, we saw a big jump across the entirety of the Australian yield curve. And again, I think that's our own market starting to price in a lower likelihood of rate cuts moving forwards, perhaps a period of higher for longer interest rates. And when equity investors, share investors see a move like that in government bond yields, usually that's a sign they want to hit sell as well, uh, because it means that, you know, a lot of other interest rates are going to go up. And it means that, you know, the earnings of shares relative to bonds uh, is, is less attractive. Now, I, d I do want to say that yields have actually been rising since we saw the Fed rate cut in September. Uh, I've mentioned before that I think there's a chance we could see that event as a perhaps spiritual peak for the global bull market that we've seen. And uh, even though we have seen prices push a little bit higher since then, um, I still somewhat hold the view that that could be the case. You know, we have seen a little bit higher, but it's not been the same sort of strong continued upwards movement since then seen mostly sideways movement with a couple of days of big gains based around, as I mentioned, strong US corporate earnings. Uh, so I still think that could be the case, um, you know, that markets are much less bullish uh, from this point onwards than they have been up until September. So let's have a look at the charts for this week, guys. Uh, this is the extra our share market, and we can see just how substantial the selling was today. Uh, we've pulled off roughly our all time high at 8360. We've broken below our trend line and we're back in that sort of sideways range that we created after that Fed rate cut. For me, the range is really around 8150 to about 8280. You could say, you know, 8120 as a sort of lower bound um, if 8150 breaks. And I would not be surprised at all to see sideways movement in this range. If our market is to have a sustained sell down, it's likely going to come from selling overseas. I don't think we're uh, running our own race enough at the moment uh, to do our own sort of technical patterns, to do our own sell off without a sell off occurring overseas. Uh, and I think that's going to be the case for some time. You know, global Western asset markets, global Western equity markets have all moved together. And unless there's something extremely specific to Australia, I can't see us breaking out of that, uh, that pattern that's affected, you know, not just the Australian market, but European markets, the New Zealand market, the Canadian market. We've all been following the US. So let's have a look at the US markets. And this is a chart of the US S&P 500 index. Uh, their most broad based, their largest index. And we can see that pretty much up until today's selling, uh, we've largely been following the same trend. Uh, they've got this short term uptrend. We had the trend line that we broke today. Uh, they just set an all time high. We set an all time high late last week. Uh, for them, their all time high is at 5870. Uh, if that's going to break, it's probably going to be on the back of strong corporate earnings this week. I actually think a more likely scenario is that they break below this steep uptrend line and then come back to support at roughly 5770, which was the previous all time high resistance. That would indicate a move of, of around sort of 81.50 on our market, maybe 81.20 at the lower bound. And uh, I suspect, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we'll see a bit of a shallowing out of the trend, perhaps sideways movement. Like I said, I think uh, perhaps a spiritual peak to this market could have been the Fed rate cut in September. And I don't think things are going to be quite as bullish uh, in, the, uh, in the aftermath of that. Could be completely wrong. Uh, there are a lot of events for markets to weigh up coming up and they could push things higher. We've got the election in November. Typically, post-election is extremely bullish. We've also got a Fed rate cut coming in November as well. They could surprise and continue harder than, uh, harder than expected. I suggest they shouldn't, but they might. And that again, that could allow further upside for global markets. So I will wrap it up there for this week, guys. Hopefully you were able to follow it. Hopefully I wasn't just rambling and hopefully you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.